So this is where I say hello to everybody. This is Luxley. I have a special guest with you, my buddy, Thamriel. Thamriel, you know what to say, right? Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Thamriel. Welcome to a commentary about World of Warcraft. During the wide beta, I went for a walk, and I came up with 10 reasons why Warlords of Draenor would fail. And now that we're six months from the initial launch and release, I look back at that list, and I brought in Thamriel because I wanted someone to speak objectively. This would be number five, ability pruning and trimming. Blizzard pitched it as a necessity that this is going to help us balance the game. And if you say the words balance the game, people will sign off on it, especially on the PvP side. And in reality, all this pruning, while they pitched it as a necessity, it hasn't balance the game at all this isn't fun gameplay ability pruning took a lot of fun things out of the game i'm not saying it wasn't necessary but there was more than one way to do it you could have baked different abilities together and rather than just outright get rid of them you could have added more glyphs like if we got you know if blizzard got rid of something that somebody really liked they could still bring it back in a glyph or they could have added a fourth choice to each tier of talents or they could have expanded the talents rather than eliminate major cooldowns whether they are damage or cc or healing cooldowns what they should have done is actually raise the cooldown on the cooldown on you know on the ability for example Give everyone something that can counter anything in the game, but have it have a high cooldown, so you have to have a second thought. Because, you know, when you use it, you're going to be like, okay, well, I can't use this for another three minutes, as opposed to 30 fucking seconds. Mm -hmm. You know, and maybe, maybe make it last a little bit longer. That'll make it more meaningful. That would make it more strategic. People will still feel like they can counter anyone in the game. But these are choices that you're going to make while you're PvPing or PvEing. What are your thoughts on this whole ability pruning? How it worked? What it was intended to do? I was had to happen. They, there's always like ability changes with every single expansion. But what I really did not like is how they. I mean, I understand they want to take some things out that were redundant, but I feel like they took too much out, which simplified everything. And when it missed up Pandaria, when they took out Auras from Paladin. I was so heartbroken because I love the mechanic. And that's what made Paladin Paladin. Just the R's you can apply to yourself and your party members. That was, like, even though some people found it redundant, the fact that it was there and the fact that it was available, it was awesome. I mean, like, you go in PvP, you put on Resistance Aura. Or if you're a tank, put on Devotion Aura so everybody gets some kind of bonus, some kind of a benefit. I, I, like the, I like how, what they, like, they had, even in Pandaria, they had the, I guess, the complexity of different abilities in, like, all the classes. And... Like, taking it away from a lot of, like, taking it away, taking that specific details away from certain classes just simplified the game to the point where it's like, I, it's like, I signed up to play an MRPG, so it's a little more complex. Why am I getting simpler abilities? I mean, that's what MMO is supposed to be. Whether it be an illusion of complexity, whether it be actual complexity with some classes that are actually hard... Uh, I, I, I still rather have that than, you know, just kind of streamline the abilities together. It's like it's like saying, oh, look, he, before in Pandaria, Arms Warriors had all these abilities. And now, look at this, three-button rotation and Bladestorm. Bladestorm still stayed. Well, many warriors rejoice. Why can't warriors build the class in the way they want to build it so they can have either multiple buttons to spam, to spam with, like, a lesser global cooldown or have less buttons to spam, but they all have impact? Like, why couldn't they do that for talents? Let's say, Affliction War, like, if it shows two different playstyles, well, they want to be more about the, I guess, like, the draining and the, like, the channeling abilities, or they want to be more of a dot-based abilities and just mostly cast dots. And whether those dots be castable or instacast, where the instacast, the, you can cast them on a move, but they will do less damage, and the ones that you have to cast will actually do more damage, which you actually have to stand and cast them. You know, why couldn't they just adjust the way people play, not the little utilities they grab? Like for Paladin, the one thing I really wanted to see, and it was an idea that I had for a while that didn't really talk to a lot of people, but you know, how they took away Guardian, Witch, and Kings except for Prop Paladin. What they should have done is just for every Paladin made a town called Guardian, Witch, and Kings that has its own tier, whether it be the Healing Guardian, the Tanking Guardian, or the DPS Guardian. The other question is, are they trying to just get more clutter off of everybody's, you know, pad? 
Well, there's still more than one way to do that. You could have baked abilities together. You could have gotten rid of some of these things that nobody ever really uses. For example, turn evil on a paladin. How often do you use it? Why is it really even there? (laughs) It's not a crucial ability in PvP or PvE. Most people don't even probably have it on their bar now unless it had, you know, that aspect that it could fear people, which was really a dumb move on Blizzard's part. But why why didn't they get rid of that ability? Or even a warlock has this ability that I don't know remember what it's called. I think it's called Soul Shatter to eliminate threat. How many people actually use that? Like no one. I mean, but wh- why is that still there? And then they add aspect of the fox, which okay, I can understand the need for it in raids here and there, and I can understand even as marksman, you can kind of maintain that buff by using it. But it's a three minute cooldown, and it lasts only like six seconds. So mm-hmm. why add that in? You're, <laughs> it makes no sense. If you wanted to add that in, you could have added it into say aspect of the pack. Right? So you have, Mm -hmm. you know, Aspect of the Cheetah, which makes the hunter go faster, and then if anybody breathes on him, like, you know, all of a sudden he, like, is dazed, you know? Or you could have added it to Aspect of the Pack, and you could have put a three-minute cooldown on it. Ten seconds, everybody can cast whatever it is they want while moving. You didn't have to add the whole new ability. What? Nobody even, nobody even likes Aspect of the Pack. This is just called Aspect of a Troll. That's, that's a little what they call either Aspect of Troll or Aspect of a Retard. Yeah, the only, time, <laughs> the only time I ever remember even thinking of using Aspect of the Pack was when I was, like, running Karazhan, you know, on my level 85 character with some friends. And somebody was saying, you know, as we're walking from one boss to the other, gee, if I was a hunter, I would use Aspect of the Pack about now, <laughs> you know? That's the only time I ever <laughs> used it. Another thing that I said, which was the fourth point, which is I said that the longer the delays are, because as you remember, at first we kind of thought we were going to get this X pack in May, then we were thinking maybe August, and then finally, like, what? <laughs> you know? Then yeah. all of a sudden they, they say, well, it might not be out till December. You know, we're not sure. We got like a lot of stuff to do yet. It's not going to be ready till December. And everyone's like, you got to be kidding me. But what happens is when you constantly delay things, the excuse is the same. And that excuse is, oh, you know, we just want to really get it right. The longer you delay and raise the expectations bar, the worse it is. And I kind of felt, Warlords, the expectations were going to greatly exceed what they delivered. My expectations were very low. My expectations were almost non-existent, so therefore, there was really only room for an upward surprise. Garrisons were better than I expected. The questing was significantly better than I ever expected or experienced. They improved it drastically. I love the way they were innovative and added garrisons in that progression of the garrison while I was progressing my character. But once you got to max level and they added these boxes, that you know, lock boxes, goal boxes that you got... But for seven battlegrounds that I won, I got the same goddamn pair of gloves. Mm-hmm. Same dungeons. Every single dungeon I entered back when I got to level hundred, every single boss dropped gloves, and every single end boss every single time dropped gloves. So everything, so I looted like fourteen pairs of gloves, like six dungeon runs, and I was like, why can I have anything but gloves? So when I got a shield, I was like, oh my god, <laughs> the Blizzard guys are smiling. I got to write a ticket. They heard my prayers. <laughs> This was intended for somebody else. I think it's a maze shield. <laughs> You're right. I'm just kind of surprised that Pandari came around as an April Fool's thing that people actually liked. So Blizzard was like, oh, people like it. I guess we'll make it. And yet they make Pandari look so nice and so good. Had three raids ready already. And then released back to back to back. I had a bunch of dungeons already set up. A bunch of beautiful places and everything. And then... We get to Warlords of Draenor, and I mean, what do we get? Just like one raid? Four, five, six, eight dungeons that in, in total? It's like, oh, well, that's that's awesome, I guess. I can only speak for myself. Like I said, my expectations were extraordinarily low. For me, I would look on the ground, and I'd be like, oh, look, there's a $5 bill. And then I'd bend over to pick it up, and I'd see it's a $50 bill. I couldn't possibly be happier because my expectations were so low. And I think the opposite is true for most people. I think most people are walking down the street and they're like, oh, wow, look, that's a $100 bill. And they actually bend down to pick it up, and it's a $10 bill. Or even worse, a dollar bill. What were your expectations going into Wadi? Well, when I, when I saw the very, very first trailer, like where it's like, 
uh, they had like the uh, the war chiefs and showed like little backgrounds of them, kind of like show what, like what their clan's all about. I kind of thought about it for a little, and I was very thoroughly confused. Like, how did this happen? Weren't we just in Pandaria? And then I started learning a little bit in the background sources about like Garrosh time traveling. I'm like, oh well, it's not a quinky dink. Uh, that's uh, wonderful. How are they gonna explain that and ex explain like how that is? Like, physically possible in a lore. But I ignored that. I let it slide. Whatever. Water under the bridge. Uh, after getting to the beta, I loved how pretty it looked. And I loved discovering it. It was a beautiful, beautiful location. I absolutely had so many hopes that I would have the most incredible time leveling there. And had the most fun leveling there. And I did. Because when they started adding those, like, chapter quests. When you complete a certain amount of chapters and you can move on to more like, more parts of the story, and it continues with that linear store progression that Pandaria didn't really have. It was awesome, and it was, like, the first time when I leveled, like, I hit level 100 as soon as I completed that quest after watching the cinematic, and it was the most epic feeling I've ever felt, and leveling was just awesome. Everything after that, like, dungeoning was kind of a pain, uh, having people learn mechanics and actually, like, relearn how to stay out of the fire was quite a feat, but... After figuring, like, in Garrison's at first, I was like, yeah, that would be awesome. That would be kind of cool. Because I wanted all these features for Garrison's. And then, as I started playing more and more in Garrison's, I started realizing, hey, this is like making a private storm wind with my own farm mill and Minecraft in backyard. This, this makes sure that I stay within this, like, utopia, this little utopia that I have. It's like, at that point, I never started going out except, like, Flying over to the raid entrance, and that's it. Hmm. After after see after logging on every single time, seeing the same garrison over and over again, and doing the dailies, sending minions out to do my dailies, and sometimes even send out high level minions to do raids for me and bring me back pieces of loot, so I didn't have to go raiding. Like at, at, I kind of thought like this does not make me feel like I'm part of the world. This makes me feel like I'm some recluse in the back of Draenor that tells people to go do something for him. This does not put me into the world. It puts me into, like, behind a desk to put NPCs into the world. Every move that they make has a counter move. It really does. And that brings up my next point, which is the X factor. The X factor is what's unknown. How is this new thing like Garrison's going to affect the overall game? How are the new stats going to affect the overall game. You don't really know until you go out there and you're raiding consistently or PvPing consistently and how people can figure out ways to exploit these things and optimize these things. And is it too OP? Is it too underpowered? And I think that this is really starting to come into focus now six months into the X-Pack. You know, garrisons were kind of new, kind of innovative, but to take this idea and expand it into shipyards is just dumb. Do you even play this game, guys? I mean, do you do you have any idea of what you're doing anymore? I, I, I don't think they do. There's a possibility that a lot of the work is going into this new X-Pack so they can release it in sync with the movie. What are your thoughts on that? I feel like it might possibly be uh, that case because I don't really see anything more that could add to Warlords of Draenor that could, you know, be the big thing. I mean, with Pandaria, you had, like, the whole Alliance and Horde conflict and it's like you knew that either Vren or Garrosh, the crazy warlord that he is, would do something. So you kind of so you kind of knew that and with the Shah you all kind of want to see what what the Shah would have, but with warlords, I mean all you really have are like you can you're just going to defeat the rest of the warlords and that's about it, but like there's nothing like nothing there's nothing in hindsight, nothing that it makes me think like hmm, maybe this might be the end point. It's like it's like I don't even like it's it's not it's difficult to read what Blizzard is gonna do, you know. With Pandaria, you could tell like like with the Shah being the problem that it is, and then with Thunder, you could tell there's gonna be like an epic boss because things just get worse and worse on Pandaria. You can kind of start telling like things things are gonna go down, and things went down with Siege of Walkermar. I mean, after you fight all the ads and take a breather at the, at the bosses and all that, but still, 
it had this kind of like it had its epic lore moment with like crowning um Volchin as a war right. chief <clears throat> yeah and in, in warlords it, it it's impossible to read what's gonna happen it's just impossible it's like okay so hamo got defeated all right blackhawk foundry got defeated all right there's gonna be a new raid and we're gonna defeat another place I hope probably with uh god what, what was that who was that warlock like the Go uh the try to make the other nerzul or Gul'dan? Uh, Gul'dan, yeah something something's gonna go down with Gul'dan for sure i mean like i know that's gonna happen but there's it's difficult to understand like what where's gonna be the build up you know wh what is gonna what's gonna be coming up next like Mandari, they kind of like the surprise you with different things like Thunder Isle, and then we got the like the Dinosaur Isle, and then Land of Siege the Lost. Of just like, <laughs> yeah, and then <laughs> see, and it's and then the Siege of Wagamar patch just turned everything upside down by corrupting the land. It's like, holy crap, that is you know, that is exciting, that is awesome. Like, what are they gonna pull for World of the Dream, or especially since it doesn't really seem like they have much like in store? This is one of the strong suits of warlords and that is the lore i mean as convoluted as the story might be it's a pretty good story it's a pretty good experience from a lore standpoint i mean the cinematics that you see while you're questing what happens with thrall in the garage that encounter even that that uh you know the battle of sharath city you know with urel and um duratar you know fighting that boss i mean that that even just talking about that gives me the chills i mean she you know that was just an epic cinematic and some great storytelling and but there's one thing about this whole x pack and i think it's one of those x factor moments along with garrisons now you know everybody thought they were innovative and cool and kind of different now they're redundant and boring and they're just adding more redundancy and boringness to them well, these whole stats the multi-strike the versatility I, I don't think that there's really anything that's lending to a certain overpoweredness because of them maybe death knights and pvp with versatility but or even Leech for that matter. But I, I do see with Warlocks and Hunters that Multi-Strike is screwing up the pets on assist. They're just running rampant wherever they want to go. They just kind of have a mind of their own. And it's it's either an AI bug or it's the whole Multi-Strike thing that's pulling them off targets. And it's very, very frustrating. The overall fear, the overall theme of the expansion in that regard, the true sense of a menacing presence you know the iron pussies <laughs> i really don't think that they're that tough i don't think that they're yeah. that threatening or that menacing even lich king there was just undead splattered everywhere now there might have been a you know they might have been hapless and mindless or whatever but there were just so many of them and they were kind of menacing and they were you kind of you always had that presence of lich king you had that same heroic story the good guy gone bad the handsome young prince compromising himself in the sense thinking he's saving his people when in out when, when in reality he's just polishing his greed Mm -hmm. and his own um, ambitions. Brilliant storytelling, menacing foes to face. You can eat a cataclysm. Deathwing. Here's a dragon with the ability to destroy the world. He gets, you know, drunk at a bar, pissed mm -hmm. off. Just, I'm just going to burn everything. And he's like, wait, I don't really want to do this. And, <laughs> and then he disappears. <laughs> and, but, I mean, why didn't he just finish the job? All right. It didn't make a lot of sense, but still, you had that presence. You had that standing in fire achievement that you could get anywhere. Pandaria, you didn't really feel it. And now, you don't feel it at all. I'm sorry, I, I don't see this Iron Horde as that menacing. I don't see them as that tough. And I think that's a big problem. I, I really do. And I think that bleeds into what you're saying, that you don't know what direction the story's going to go. Because the story... While a very interesting story really doesn't have that threatening or menacing feel to it. With Blackrock Foundry being out, it kind of shows that, hey, this is a big place that or that Orcs of Drain or have literally industrialized from scratch, and then you go in with your raid or your LFR group, defeat Black Hand, and yeah, woo, they don't have any more technology. It's like first kind of makes me question how the hell did tribal orcs learn how to use technology and industrialize themselves in such a little time? with apparent knowledge that freaking Garrosh brought himself. I don't even know what what the hell he brought himself. He probably brought a goblin with himself to like teach everybody how to do things. And two, it's like, all right, cool. They're the the freaking like the war chiefs of like the original Draenor. That's cool and all. But 
it's like nothing makes me really give a shit about him, you know. And, and, like, and, they, and they said that that you was, give a shit about they him. They said that that was you know a big <laughs> a big part of the problem with Mr. Pandaria. Also, you know, the people didn't give a shit. You and I liked Pandaria because we felt that the zones were immersing and they were fun to quest through and interesting story nonetheless. But the majority of people didn't like that. You know, you just didn't care too much. You know, people didn't really care that much about Pandaria. People don't really care that much about Draenor. And, yeah, it was nice to visit. And you're right. How did they get this advanced technology? You know, you think by drinking the demon blood that they're – passing on supreme power but in reality by turning down the supreme power they're more supreme than they were supposed to be that mm. doesn't quite make sense to me i think what happened was when they went back in time i think is you know the wright brothers instead of inventing flying decided let's like upgrade their technology and do something else because we can't fly here anyway here's another point that i think i was dead on accurate with warlords is crackers and not a meal I mean, if you look at BC and you look at new features that it introduced, it introduced heroics, it introduced her arena, it introduced uh, flying into the game, and obviously a lot of other features, but those were the primary features. So it was a pretty well-endowed X-Pack with new features and exciting things. Then you look at Lich King, you introduce the technology of phasing which made the story very immersing, the constant presence of the Lich King, especially in Northrend. Mm -hmm. They also introduced achievements. They also introduced the best class in the game, Death Knights. You know, <laughs> I mean, that was just a great idea. There, there were a lot of new things. That, I think there were about eight zones that they introduced. They introduced a lot of dungeons and new dungeons into the game. Mm -hmm. I think that had the most new dungeons. People loved Ulduar. They loved ICC. I mean, they had some very good raids. There was a lot of things that made it very endowed, it gave it a lot of substance. Same thing could even be said with Kata. I mean, they introduced arch arch you know, archaeology, which failed. Two new races, goblins, which are kind of cool. Wurgen, which I think are very cool. They introduced new class combos. They introduced RBGs. They introduced a lot of... And finally gave us reforging, which I think... Yeah. Well, no, they gave us transmog as well. Yeah. Which I think they should have started off with Transmog. That would have made the expansion amazing. It's like, hey, Cataclysm and Transmog. If only they had the technology. I mean, then. they made a few mistakes there, and this is where Blizzard yeah. started to make some mistakes. I mean, I thought it would have been really cool. One of the big mistakes was that they had all these zones scattered about, and it didn't have that homogenous theme kind of feeling. What I think would have been really cool, and I just thought of this idea. You have one starting zone, which is Hygel, and you have the Horde filter in on one side, and you have the Alliance filter in on another. And they never really – it's almost broken into two zones. They never really clash with each other. And then you get to a neutral city, much like, say, a dollar on mm -hmm. And in that neutral city, there are portals to the next zones, much like you currently see in Ogremar and you see in Stormwind. Those portals will lead you to those other zones, such as Vashir, the water elemental, or – Deep, deep home, which was the earth elemental, or you could even say the firelands, uh, which was the fire elemental, or you could say twilight highlands, which was the shadow elemental, and you could say oldham, which is the air elemental. And then it doesn't really matter where they are because then they could be scattered about because they're clumped together in this neutral city. So it has more of a close tight feeling. You keep that whole theme together. I, I just thought that that would have made a lot more interesting of a story. And even if you took Deathwing, Fighting on his back really was not that great of an experience. They kind of missed the mark on that. I think it would have been really cool if there was some kind of progression in the raid that you had to gather this elixir or something that would weaken Deathwing and bring him to human form, and then you fight him in a battle. You know, I, I just don't know where all this innovative thinking goes on Blizzard. I, I, I almost fear like I almost feel like they're afraid to take a risk. I almost feel like they're afraid to go against the beaten path and do something very different. And now Blizzard's at that point where they got to take a shot and, tr mm -hmm. and do something to make it work. Because what this isn't working. It's not. It it's just. It's not sustained growth. I mean, you even look at MOP. I mean, they improved the questing. They made the zones really nice. They added a uh, legendary for everybody. They even introduced, not my thing, but pet battles. They had a new race that could choose its faction. They had a new class. All these 
X-Packs were not an appetizer. They were a meal. They pretty much were. They were well endowed. They had a lot of substance. And then you take a look at mm. Warlords, and it's like, huh? <laughs> I mean, you have garrisons. You know, you have level 90s, instant 90s, which really isn't a big mm. deal to a guy like you or me because we already had at least 10 90s already. Is 11 going to make a difference to us? No. It's almost like this joke that Eddie Murphy did in the 80s. Or it might have been the 90s. I don't know. But he did this thing where he was dating this girl, and for six months, she wouldn't have sex with him. She wants to wait. So he has to wait six months, and she's really hot, and he's dying to have sex with her. And it's like he's dying. He's like, oh, I got to sleep with her. I got to sleep with her. And then he finally has sex with her, and it's great. He loves it. It's like, wow, this is amazing. And then he has his sex with her a second time, and it's, uh, it's, like, it's not so great. And my point is when you're starving, crackers seem like a meal. And I think a lot of people were dying for content at the end of Mop, and they were just, like, so anxious to get content. And Blizzard was, you know, hyping this up, hyping this up, hyping this up, that the expectations didn't meet. And in the end, it wasn't even really a meal. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, looking at the sub numbers and that big spike in World of Dream, right? I think you, uh, you literally hit the nail. Uh, wait, hammer on the nail. I usually say nail on the I say nail on the head. be ironic. But, yeah, it sounds better, but, <laughs> uh, it's not but right. <laughs> I, I know it's not right. That's a joke with it. <laughs> uh, but seriously, it's just like I would I, I'm completely understanding why the sub amounts like rose during like the launch of World of Draenor because that was just such a like literally that was such a boring period of like Siege of Wakamar and after like initial launch of Siege of Wakamar where just nothing happened that anything would seem like an, the most incredible thing ever. And people jumped on the World of Draenor thinking, yes, we finally got something after Siege of Ads. And then they realized, oh, that's it. The uh, the continent seems a lot smaller than Pandaria. Actually, it seems like it's got smaller and smaller after Wrath of Lich King. We just get garrisons. We never have to go see the world. All right, great. I'm gonna do my garrison stuff, and like after a month later, they like realize what am I doing? My characters are getting better upgraded, and my characters are doing more things in the game than I am doing. Yeah, you got. I'm yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> yeah, they're bots. The, That's basically the what they are. The NPCs have more of a life in game than your personal character has. The NPCs have more of a meaning that you send out like do commands and missions and get your gear. They have more of a meaning than you do. Hell, some of my minions that I have, I started getting them like armor upgrades and weapon upgrades. Some of them are better geared than I am getting geared. Some of them get geared faster than I am even getting geared. It's like, can I participate in this? Can I be part of the NPCs? Can I submit my character to be an NPC and do garrison missions? It, 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 was, it was great at first, but like you said, it's crackers, not a meal. It's literally just an appetizer. It literally just brought out the crackers. We ate the crackers. We loved it. It's like, what else? All right, what's, like, what else is there on the menu? Let's say that's it. So basically, you're still hungry for content. I'm still hungry for content, especially on the PvP side, because people say it's lacking. It's not lacking. It's not existent. And then we talk to Blizzard, and what do we get? We get a sign that says, out to lunch, which is not what you want to see when you're hungry. I just remember when they first announced it at BlizzCon 2013. Before that happened... There was a lot of speculation of what the X-Pack was going to be. It seemed like it was going to be like a Warlord, just go back to Draenor thing. Or people were also saying it was going to be the Dark Below. It was going to be like a South Seas kind of thing. I was really hoping for the Dark Below because at this point, I'm freaking sick of orcs, okay? And Same. and I'm you know and I was very very sh surprised that you know Blizzard was going to introduce a th third Horde centric X-Pack and a second one full of orcs. I, I was just like, you got to be kidding me, guys. But the big thing that was disappointing, I remember they were talking about the Demon Hunter being the next class. And I, at first, I was thinking, eh, Hunter meets Warlock, goes on a date, has a kid, a.k.a. Demon <laughs> Hunter. But as I did the research on it, because I wanted to, like, not immediately dismiss it without understanding it, I thought it was really cool. And from a guy who's an altaholic like myself and really can't focus on one class... I really saw like a Demon Hunter being a class that I could really sink my teeth in and commit to and play no matter what. So I was really pumped. I was like, this is going to be cool. I really want to see a Demon Hunter. And then I was thinking, I was taking, to, taking into account the complete imbalance on PvP servers uh, between Horde and Alliance. I mean, out of 128 PvP servers in the U.S., 96 of them, I think the number was, were heavily Horde populated. That is an astonishing number. And when I mean heavily Horde populated, I'm talking like a 5 to 1 Horde to Alliance ratio on a PvP server. That is a nightmare. I kind of thought, like, if they introduced a really cool new class to play, I thought it might help balance things out. Like, I thought Ethril's for the Alliance, Arakoa for the Horde. 
I thought that would make people interested in the alliance, really cool, be an ethereal rogue or something. I just thought it'd be really cool. Mm -hmm. And then when they introduced Warlords of Draenor, no new class, <laughs> no fourth fourth spec specialization because there was some speculation that they were going to do that, and no new yeah. playable race. And orcs, more orcs, and just kind of like... <laughs> just what we needed after Siege of Algamar. Fight through the Out of Orcs? Oh, look at that, an expansion just for orcs, and you fight all orcs. <laughs> I don't understand. Jesus Christ. I, I, I was just like, I was very disappointed, and that kind of really lowered the bar on my expectations immensely, which is why the game actually exceeded my expectations when it came out. What happens if well, the movie comes out in June and the next new X-Pack comes out in November again? I mean, that's just missing the boat, missing opportunities. Yeah. And this is becoming the theme with World of Warcraft across the board. Garrison could have made a customized. Nope, didn't do it. Subraces could have made them customized when you upgraded the character models. Nope, didn't do it. Could have added Tanin Jungle as an extra zone and did what they initially planned to do at Farallon. Nope, didn't do it. That leads me to my last point. There's just too many ongoing issues with the fluidity of gameplay, and I'm speaking specifically on the PvP side. Blizzard addressed this whole issue where you're in world PvP, whether you're actually looking to do world PvP or you're on Timeless Isle and you're doing dailies. You run into somebody who's in heroic raid gear and he's got 40, 50 eye levels on you. And he's got the same baseline resilience as you, and his gear has better stats, and his gear has better, more health, and his gear has better set bonuses. You don't even have a hope and a prayer. You're not beating anybody who's 50 eye levels higher than you. It's, it's not happening unless that other person has an epileptic seizure or falls asleep. They address this. They did address this. I mean, by scaling the PvP gear. Might not be the best solution, but it is a pretty decent solution. They tried. They did try, and you got to give them a gold <laughs> star for that. And, and yeah, even in a sense, they tried with Asheran to kind of have a melting pot for the raider to get involved with PvP. They tried. They failed. Okay, I get it. But now you have this whole issue of class imbalance. In PvP. I know that there's a problem with the design of the game. When I'm on Darkspear and I see a Red Paladin selling twos in trade chat, 200 gold to win, and the guy doesn't even have a 1550 rating. Mm -hmm. There is a major problem with that. There are certain classes that are built for twos. Rets, Warriors, DKs, you could even say Ferals. You mm -hmm. never see a Shadow Priest selling twos in trade chat. You never see an Elemental Shaman selling twos in raid in uh, trade chat. It just doesn't exist. It doesn't happen. And, and you know, people will say, well, the game isn't balanced around threes, but it's not even balanced. I'm, I mean, the game isn't balanced around twos, but it's not even balanced around threes. I mean, there's something wrong when a Mage can ice block and a Paladin can bubble, and there's only really two classes in the game that can break that. I say either give it to everybody or... Give it to maybe 30% or 40% of the classes in the game because, mm -hmm. you know, it's like being a little bit pregnant. I think it's an atrocity that you have to be sure that you have a priest or a warrior who's glyph for it to break that immune bubble. So it's either you give it to everybody or you give it to, say, 40%. Of the classes. Another another perfect example is fear. Every single melee class in the game, save feral druids, can trinket a fear without using their trinket. Okay, they have a, an ability that can trinket the fear, or in some cases, prevent the fear. There's something wrong with that. <laughs> you know, when you give a warlock a spammable fear, or you give a priest psychic scream to peel melee, and every single melee class in the game except one can break it. What's the point? <laughs> I mean, so you're going to make an argument with me that threes are balanced? They're not balanced. If, even if it is balanced by your definition, by, the, by someone's invented definition, the fact is you're, I guarantee you you're alienating half the classes in the game. I guarantee you you're striking useless half the classes in the game, and that creates a problem with progression on the PvP side because if you're an elemental shaman, you don't quite fit into a certain comp. Even rets in some extent don't fit in the in certain comps. And and if you're going to play these comps, you're eliminating classes. And when you're eliminating classes, you're keeping people from progression. Because the stigma is that the guy who has 2k doesn't want to play with the guy who has no rating, who's trying out PvP. Or even PvPing on Azult and might not have it on that all. They don't want to do it. And that 
presents a problem with progression. And maybe that's why Blizzard has warriors and DKs and paladins in the game because they can advance and not necessarily have to rely on someone else. But the problem is there's still a lot of classes that have to rely on someone else. There are a lot and this even filters into PvE. There are a lot of classes in the game being left out just simply because and they're not doing the numbers. And I'll leave you with this other one point I really want to hammer this home with. If you go on Noxic right now and you take a look at the single target DPS for each eye level, you will see Shadow Priest being either ranked last or second to last in every category. And they started around 10th or 11th at the beginning of the X-Pack. So they got significantly worse. And like you said earlier th- in the video, they're not doing well in PvE. They're doing well in BGs, and but they're not doing well in Arena, save threes and a certain god comp. But my point is, when you look at those numbers, the discrepancy and lack of parity is astonishing. The optimized DPS for the top DPS and the limiting DPS for the guy on the bottom, the spread is anywhere from 26 to 28%. How can you say that there's parity when there's that kind of a differential between the guy topping the charts and the guy at the bottom of the charts? Even half that gap is unacceptable. It should be no more than 10%. This is a problem that has just never been addressed and persists And for whatever fucking reason, Blizzard just doesn't want to fix it. Why can't they just fix the goddamn game? Your thoughts? I think you hit the uh, nail on the hammer. I know that the sentence sounds wrong, but still, like, it's just... It's... I would... Instead of them, like, implementing their current quote-unquote fix, I'd rather, like, I'd rather... Instead of dealing with what we have now, I'd rather them just add a four spec except the druids to every single other class... Just so there will be chaos, because I, 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 I would rather deal with chaos better than the current balance that they have now, because it's not balanced, it's not set up. They try to they try to do a build, they try to make the ability pruning originally also uh, to kind of invite more players to kind of you know like create more comps in PvP. That's what they were trying to advertise, like make uh, like not like not invite a class but invite a player. It's like that still doesn't fix the issue though. Instead, add a four spec just to make a hodgepodge, just make, just make this mess, make this storm of just like unbalanced classes, because that will probably be a better situation to fix than fixing classes now. Add four priests and other specs that will like do something amazing and miraculous, doesn't matter if it's overpowered, just something that they could do. So that people that don't like playing Shadow Priests in threes because they keep facing those comps that constantly counter them, can switch to that four spec and actually counter them. Add this hodgepodge insanity so that there's some kind of difference in the game. So it's like, so you're not fixing the issue that they keep trying to fix every single time and just keep failing at it with every little, with every patch and every expansion. But add something different there because that would be a better mess to fix, an easier mess to fix than trying to, and trying to so, so called implement a balance of classes. Because classes will never get balanced. Red Power and Mr. Pandaria was awful. Yes, it was. I hated playing it because it was just so bad. But now Draenor, it's overpowered to the bone, and I'm not even kidding. It's, it's just the the difference is literally not. Anything. Well, the only reason why a guy like myself who plays a Shadow Priest will say it's not overpowered is because I could dispel the bubble, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And that there's something wrong with that when I'm only one of two classes that can do that, which further lends to that imbalance. But I think you're right. I think having more choices is is a way of addressing the balance than. The way Blizzard's currently doing it. Blizzard just seems to be stuck in the middle. And I'm tired of being in the middle. I either want it to be balanced and, 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 homo- and homogenized. Okay. Or I want it to be chaotic. <laughs> I don't want in the middle. <laughs> because in the middle is not suiting anybody. Because at, at least if it's chaotic, we could say, well, we tried to balance the game. It's not going to be balanced. But I, at least if I know I'm facing this dual melee comp in twos, I know that if I play this spec, it, at least I have that choice to switch that spec and address that situation. It's better than what we have now. You know, it, it, it's, a, it's a telltale sign, and we've seen the telltale signs of guys like Thyraz and Soda Pop and quitting the game, and you know, and I made a video about that, and most people gave some great, great feedback and, and insight, but there were the couple like, who cares? Well, I'll tell you why I care. I love the game. And I want the game to succeed. And I enjoy and love making videos about the game. It sustains my interest. No matter how bad it has become, it's still interesting to me. If, you know, bigger people who promote the game and 
you know, if they bow out and no longer do it, it hurts the game. And you have to kind of figure that a guy like Soda Pop, who's no longer streaming WoW or doing WoW videos, it hurts the game. What are your thoughts mm -hmm. on that? Well, well, I was watching Soda Pop actually yesterday, and he was playing Terra, which recently came to Steam, just a free MMO. And he was just in... I kind of fell for the guy, because he was literally sitting at his desk, playing a new MMO that he downloaded, while also looking up videos on other MMOs out there, desperately, like, not even, like, like just being curious about it, but desperately trying to find something that will, will just, like, I guess, satisfy the craving that WoW does not give him anymore, the feeling that WoW does not give him anymore, because he wants that same feeling that he had, like, in Pandaria and Cataclysm of Wrath and BC and everything, that the war Warlords just doesn't give him. And even I start noticing myself personally, I started not being, like, now that I'm out of the raiding guild, not raiding, I hardly even get on World of Warcraft anymore. I only get on to, like, record the leveling Let's Play or maybe level a Rogue whenever I'm rendering videos, but I am playing every game other than World of Warcraft <laughs> now, personally. There's not even nothing much I can do with, like, different builds for my character, because, like, the talents are not exactly that diverse that uh, is something game-changing. It's not like it allows me to, like, change my entire rotation for rep out because it's still the same rotation, still same weapons, still pretty much same cooldowns, just with slight variations. There's nothing in the game that makes me say, wow, oh my god, this is incredible and amazing. I mean, to tell you something innovative, I am playing Final Fantasy XIV. I know we're not, we're not talking about WoW now, it's just switching over to a different game, but still, that game allows you to play every single class as one character. And even allows you to make hybrid classes from leveling other classes. Yeah. yeah, and I love it. It's like you're allowed to play the way you want to play, and you're allowed to customize your character. And like, I, I love that about like MMOs, like with let's say ESO. No matter what class you choose, the weapons, the weapons and cloth, and whichever ability you choose are up to you. You want to focus on weapon abilities, spec into weapon abilities. You want to focus on using a mana for your class abilities, do that. You want to be a tank? As a, you want to be a tank warrior? You want to be a healing warrior? You can do whatever you want, and I absolutely love it, you know? <laughs> well, I think I think the problem with WoW with that would be, like, the lore The lore nerds would lose it. Oh, yeah, they, def <clears throat> they definitely would. But honestly, the chaos will be more exciting than what Warlords Drainer is now. And I, and I think that's a very, very, <laughs> uh, very valid point with dead-on accuracy, because that's the element that makes a, a, sh a show like Game of Thrones so enthralling and engaging, is mm -hmm. the chaos. You can't necessarily predict what's going to happen at any given moment. If you like a character or you go to a wedding, you got major problems there, I mean... That's what makes the show so amazing is that anybody can die at any given time and there's, you know, no boundaries there. And we need a red <laughs> wedding in World of Warcraft. That's what we need. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we do. We need a red wedding. And and, and that's going to make everything amazing. Yeah, I mean, I, I really think you're onto something there. And, and uh, from a lore, lore standpoint, from a standpoint of shaking things up, you know, like they kind of tried to do with Kata. But they never really sold it because they never really, you know, they never went the whole way and went into Outland and Lich King and upgraded those. So it really didn't feel like a complete change. Now it's supposed to be in the middle of the questing experience and, you know, have a new experience and then get to level 60 and then it becomes redundant and repetitive again. That, that, that doesn't make sense. I, I think you're right. I, I think that, you know, there really needs to be some some major shakeup. You know, I, I even remember seeing a thread on this and in, in, on MMO. They were saying that something really devastating needs to happen to the Alliance or the Horde. You know, and I think it'd be a great idea. Let's blow up Stormwind. Let's just mm -hmm. blow it up, <laughs> okay? The Ghanaians always, you know, the Ghanaians were always saying, you know, we'll come back one day, we'll come back one day. Well, we, you know, we invented the Figamajig Gamaga thing that got rid of all the undead plague, and now Ghanaians is the mm -hmm. capital city. I just don't understand the lack of innovative thinking at Blizzard. I, I, I think it's gotten stale. I think it's gotten old. It, it, they they got to take chances, and I, I don't know what they are. I don't know if they're going to do it. I, I'm just really – what I'm really curious is what the next X-Pack is. That's what I'm really super curious about. My thoughts are it's going to have something to do with the old gods because in a very subtle way, Blizzard changed all the bosses in Black Fathom Deeps. Didn't really tell anybody. 
And the only reason why I found that out was because I was bored and I was leveling another hunter and paladin, and I got in there and I'm like, this is different. Why is <laughs> why is this here? And and Blizzard doesn't make those subtle changes for no reason. So I'm thinking, and the last boss in that dungeon is supposedly a minion of one of the old gods, and we kill him, which is enough to piss off one of the old gods. And maybe that's what I'm thinking is the next X pack. And maybe mm-hmm. that's somehow linked in with the whole dark below or the South Seas kind of thing. And the big question is, I'm going to ask you this simple question, is WAD still fun? Are you asking me? Oh, well, I'm, well, I'm asking the viewers, but I'm also asking you. <laughs> oh. Uh, nah. That's an nothing aff- fun for that's me That's an affirmative no. Now, what, 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 <laughs> if you had to isolate a single reason why, you think about it for a second. I'll tell you what I isolated to. I noticed when I'm PvPing, which I've been doing a lot on my mage and my balance druid lately, even my hunter, there just seems to be something missing. And it's just very evident to me that this ability pruning gave me less choices, gave me less resources, gave me less things in my bat utility belt, and it shows. I would love, you know, as a shadow priest, I would love to have void tendrils back. You know, I mean, before, you know, Psychic Scream used to be baseline. Now it's gone, you know, now I have to choose between Void Tendrils and Psychic Scream. That's Mm -hmm. not good for the class, and it gimps the class. Even my Hunter. I did a, uh, I have a new PvP episode coming out where I'm in Arena, and I'm making fun of the Hunter who misses five traps in a row on me as a healer because I'm moving. (laughs) Now, I'm not poking fun at her as a bad Hunter because I miss traps like crazy too because I don't have Scattershot anymore. It's not easy to, to trap a moving target now. I miss Scattershot, not because I miss the ability, because it's cool, because it is re- it drastically reduces the effectiveness of my trap ability. I mean, I'm not saying the game isn't fun. My answer would be, yeah, it's still fun, but not as fun as it used to be. So how would you answer that question? Is Warlord still fun, and if you could isolate it to one thing, why it is or isn't, what's your answer? I feel like if I had to summarize it, uh, Warlord's Drainer is not fun, because less isn't always more. That's how I'm going to put it. My question to everyone out there is, Warlord or Draenor still fun? Is it something still worth playing? Is there hope for the future? I guess this is Luxley saying whatever it is, you know, by you, morning, afternoon, or night, just make it great, have fun, and stick with what is fun. Luxley signing out, and hey, I'm saying goodbye. Thank you so much for watching the uh, video. Make sure to answer Luxley's uh, Luxley's. Question. Yeah, two hours into yeah. the video. Luxley's, two, yeah, two hours into the video. Make sure to add, answer Luxley's question in the comments below. I would love to see you guys, what you guys think about World of the Dreamer, or whether it's fun or not. My name is Samriel. Like, subscribe to both of us. Be sure you go over and take a peek at Tham's channel, which is absolutely peppered with many games that aren't WoW. And if you're thinking of some new games, that's the best. If you're bored of WoW, come over to my channel. I mean, if you're, if you're you know, kind of <laughs> feeling WoW is stale and you're looking for something else to play, that, that's a great way to preview a few games like Final Fantasy, Elder Scrolls Online, Guild Wars 2, and a few others. So go check out Thamriel. Take it easy, everyone.